as I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to stay focused and centered on topics that will help each of us find different ways to bring about transformation in our lives. And last Monday after the annual meeting, I say, well, I talked about thinking for January. What can I talk about in February? Well, February 14th, Valentine's Day, love. <laughs> hey, I can talk 15 minutes on love, wrap it all up. No problem. I had a very busy week, so I didn't think about my talk. I thought, well, I'll have plenty of time on Friday or Saturday to do that. Everything changed about 3 a.m. Friday morning. I'll get into more about that. But I decided to call today's message, Love, the Foundation of Humanity. I'm not an anthropologist, so I don't know exactly. I've heard a lot of things, and I'm interested in history. And, but it seems that there have been humans on this planet for, I don't know, 8 million, 10 million, 11 million, 12 million years. I don't know for sure. Let's just, for the sake of discussion today, just call it 10 million years. I mean, I'm sure each one of us can wrap our heads around what 10 million years is actually like. Just a long time. Well, for 99.998% of that time, Humans lived in a society and a system of societies based on nurturing, partnership, and love. And they survived and thrived for those 9.998 million years in spite of our planet being hit by a big rock whatever that's called and a lot of um, extinction took place but almost immediately all of nature people included because they lived in this partnership and this caring and this nurturing each other began to almost immediately thrive but then about 5,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, beginning with what they call, I think, the agriculture age, the systems of society changed. And those systems became systems of dominance maintained by force and violence. And if we look at our world for these last 5,000 years, we can see that repeat and repeat and repeat and reinforce and reinforce and repeat. But there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Here in the last couple hundred years, we've begun to shift again. Just in this country, we've had civil rights become an issue. All kinds of movements centered on this issue of civil rights and equality. Women's suffrage, caring about the health of one another, caring about have we got homes and shelter for one another. The main system, that system of dominance maintained by force and violence is still prevalent. But there's, there's some new breath. And some of the Scandinavian countries have already begun to step a little more out of that dimension of dominance. The system of 
partnership and love and nurturing. You know, human beings, amongst all of the, I'll call it animals, living things, creatures, mammals, we have been told, tells us in the Bible, man was born to have dominion over the, all the animals and the plants and the birds and the fishes in the sea. But do you know what? Are humans really superior? You look at our offspring. I think our offspring, human offspring, are probably the slowest maturing creatures on this planet. All other creatures mature into adult activity and function in a very short time. One year, two years, 18 months, three years. Humans, it takes 20 years almost for our brains and our bodies to develop to the point we can function as adults of our species. And what happens in that 20 years? That sets the course for the rest of our lives. Is love the foundation for our personal lives, each of us? I'm going to stop talking about that particular thing now, I'm just going to leave that question. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened to me at 3 o'clock Friday morning and why I chose this topic and why I'm going to say the rest of what I'm going to say this morning. And I will try to hurry because there's a football game, I'm, I hear, like Natalie said. At 3 o'clock Friday morning, I was channel surfing. And I found the best time to watch television is from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., like PBS, especially Channel 22, because it says it signs off at midnight, but it doesn't. That's when they have their most informative programming, the programming that the corporate media does not want people to know is being aired. And so on Channel 22 at 3 a.m., there was a lady, I don't remember her name now, she was doing an interview of a lady who I'd forgotten about. Her name is Rian Eisler. Now, some of you have remember that name. Back in 87, she wrote a book called The Chalice and the Blade. I bought that book back then, and I was going to read it, but I... I started it, but then I was busy, and then I wound up down in Belize. But on one of my trips back from Belize, my girlfriend and I went to hear her at a lecture in San Francisco. And sad to say, I was impressed with what she said, but my subconscious had not allowed me to hear the profundity of the wisdom that she was sharing. Well, she just released another book in August. And that book is called Nurturing Our Humanity. You may want to, I'm going to ask you to write that down. Nurturing Our Humanity. I watched an hour-long interview with her Friday morning. When that was over at 4 o'clock, I got on my computer and I looked up on the internet, nurturing our humanity, humanity Rianne Eisler. And her name is spelled, it's the quotes on the order of service. So if you just write down nurturing our humanity, or remember that, that's one of your homework assignments this week. Check this out. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to say something I didn't think I'd be saying today. I spoke last week at the annual meeting. I was excited because this year we might just have some classes.
Classes aren't my favorite thing. Vivian Clark gave me an assignment about 14, 15 years ago, part of my on-the-job training, to mod mod moderate a class, which was a book study. And the book was The Power of Attraction by the Hickses. I didn't like it. I didn't believe in what the book was selling. I haven't given a class since. Vivian and I did, actually that was a misstatement, Vivian and I did a dialogue a few years ago, ran about six nights, and it was actually based on Emily Cady's book, The, the Truths, the, the Truth, uh, uh, anyway. And that was pretty successful, and I believed in that. Lessons in Truth, that's the name of the book. But to, I haven't read this book, Nurturing Our Humanity, but in my life, there have been three things that have really, recently, that have really turned me on. Shortly after I started coming here, I started listening to Deepak Chopra, and his di discussions, his talk about how quantum physics interfaced with what I believed God to be, built a fire inside of me. And I studied, and I studied, and I read, and I watched, and I contemplated. Wayne Dyer was another one, kind of, kind of, this makes sense. And then that Greg Braden with his book, The Divine Matrix, that was again enforcing how quantum physics interfaces with what must be God. My, my, my opinion only. But the wisdom that Rian has shared in this book. It's like a volcano has go gone off inside of me. And I'm going to get that book tomorrow, and I'm going to read it. So don't bother me for a couple of days, if you please. <laughs> and if it's what I think it is, I will be offering a class on that book, and we will tear it apart and ingest it and digest it and re-ingest it and digest it pretty soon, chapter by chapter. Humanity thrived for millions of years. And our technologically greatness and insight has brought us to the point where we could possibly extinct ourselves. The experts tell us it's kind of inevitable as long as we stay on the same course. But there are other ideas and thoughts available. And as I think about this, this type of information, this type of thinking, this type of consciousness has the potential of not only transforming me and you, but our society as well. Perhaps it will give us something that will help us transcend our entire lifetime of the dog dogmatic conditioning of dominance and force and violence that every one of us has been subjected to nonstop since the day we first breathed air. And anything that has that possibility, that potential, I want to take a very strong look at. Love, nurturing, our species thrive 
for millions of years based on a system that was structured by love and caring and nurturing. And we now live in a global society based on dominance and force and violence and greed created by economy. We have the power to change the way we think. We have the power to change the system that humanity lives in, under, by. We do. I believe that. Or I wouldn't be standing here. So I'm going to give you a couple of assignments. Number one, check out this lady and her book, Nurturing Our Humanity. If you're interested, if I think the book's good, I'm going to recommend you get it. And if that's the case, I will have a class on it really soon. I don't think we have a minute to spare. And the other assignment is I'm going to ask you to really Assess your life. What is the foundation of your life? Is it love? Is it survival? Is it anger? Is it compassion? It's important that you know what is the foundation of your life. And if you're not happy with that, or you think there's something better, work on it. You have the power to accomplish anything that you can think you can accomplish. Today's the Super Bowl game. Again, this country will be divided. <laughs> Seriously, you can sm laugh, smile. We will be divided by something that is dependent upon dominance, winning or losing. Television, Facebook, the internet, politics, sports. I heard somebody say quite aptly, these are the very destructive and lethal weapons of mass distraction. <laughs> we might quite possibly hold the future of humanity within our grasp. And actually not quite possibly, we do. We're part of the human race. And what we do has effect on humanity. And I'd love to be a charter member of developing, redeveloping, redefining a system for global humanity based on partnership and love and caring. And I'd like you to all join me. Love. I've heard the experts talk about the four kinds of love. Michael Beckwith, he's based his whole ministry decades on the Agape Center. Love, unconditional, accepting love. I don't think it's possible with our brains this big to fully comprehend the power and the sustenance 
that love provides not only our species, but every species on this earth. It's perhaps the most important consideration any of us might ever consider. Love, our world needs it, and we have it. And let's share it. It's what our world needs, and it's what each one of us desire more than anything, is to be loved and to love. Let's stand up and sing what the world needs now. <laughs>
Still windy and cold. <laughs> 